Hello, Icon fans. This is Shadow Fury CC3 with an exhibition match between George Lee and Chris Worth. George Lee is currently in the bottom right corner playing CISO, and Chris Worth is in the top left corner also playing CISO. Both of these players have agreed to play a game without hierarchies, so we will see how that works out. Because we've been doing some experimentation, my last cast between Crown Avert and Chitin also went over this as a Grecon versus CISO match. So this is a CISO mirror on Cordova, which has been changed quite a bit since the last time we saw it, actually. The main base has had its resources reduced quite a bit. There's new expansions, or rather the expansions that were over on the edges and midpoints of the map have been moved in to the north and south and given more resources. All of them have been given more resources, but the ones in the east and west are roughly where they were originally. And every other expansion that was there before has had its resources reduced in order to encourage expansion to these midpoint expansions because in version 1.2, the hyper expansion play isn't quite as popular, quite as powerful, but at the same time it meant that having single large bases like I did before in order to avoid the hyper expansion play ends up overcompensating, which is why the expansions have been changed around the way they work. So looks like George Lee is sending out his marine over to the southwest expansion, well the yeah, southwest park expansion, and sending his Special Ops towards Chris's base while well, Chris is sending a Special Ops and Marine over to George Lee's base while well, he's sending a considerably larger infantry force. The Marine not being used for additional expansion, so George Lee definitely focused a lot more on economy than Chris Worth is. And double checking, George Lee has, see further in the future, George Lee is going to have to deal with this coming in. He has, he had lost his Special Ops as Chris did come in and destroy it as it was coming along. It was small fight here and now Chris sending his special ops and marine towards George Lee's base so George Lee well aware of what's going on and his marine at the southwest corner at the 423 mark both players are focused on the present right now at the 315 mark and George Lee is getting machinery right now he's also getting a couple more QPRPs in his main base he doesn't have anything set up at this point in the southwest expansion further in the future he has not actually sent any orders to start expanding there so that expansion has not been used yet, and the 535 mark is when Chris Hayworth is going to hit George Lee with his scouting and harassment attack. And it looks like there's... Oh wow, there's an ATC coming in as well. So Chris Hayworth definitely going for a rush-oriented strategy. On a map like this, this is a very large map for this sort of strategy. I'm a bit surprised this is actually happening. But it is, Chris Hayworth is definitely going for expan... For, not for expansion, for rushing. George Lee's going for expansion, which is much more expected on this map. But Chris Hayworth is... Deciding, forget expansion, I'm going straight for attacks, not even going to the near expansions that he has. He's building more RPs in his main base, but he hasn't really focused at all on getting anything other than more military units, and even then only a few military units, but enough to start dealing some harassment, start dealing some damage to George Lee's base, and George Lee is going to have to deal with this as it comes in. He does have a Marine and Special Ops and a mech as well set up to help deal with this. I don't see how the mech's going to help out a whole lot. It's an anti-air unit more than an anti-ground unit, so I don't imagine it's going to be much use. But it might work. It might not be a big deal. I think at least as a bit of a mutual... Oh, never mind. The second marine. Okay, so there's three marines... Sorry, two marines, one special ops, and a mech that will be able to hold off the special ops marine and ATHC coming in from Chris Worth. And also, ATHCs are coming in for... For George Lee. So George Lee will be able to defend this, no problem. And this is why I'm surprised to see the use of a rush strategy on Cordova, because Cordova, like I said before, is a very large map. Rush strategies are basically impossible on a map this size. There's pretty much no way of actually pulling it off. And it looks like, oh, the Special Ops actually has been killed. So, no, there's no way right now for George Lee to detect that ATHC can come in and start killing the Marines, no problem. And it looks like Chris Worth jumping back to the 442 mark. This is before the ATHC actually hit. And he's now moving to flank the infantry that are defending, using a special ops and marine to go around the side, not attacking them directly, which is a good idea. While well, the ATT comes in and is able to take care of one of the marines quite quickly. Now going for the special ops, but the marines and special ops are able to take out the ATTs. So it's actually this is working as a good decoy attack to let Chris Worth destroy one of the RPs in the back. And it looks like he's gonna be able to destroy another one, but George Lee has jumped back to the 515 mark. And He's not moving his ATHCs. I'm a bit surprised. I don't know why he's not moving those ATHCs. They are the best defense he has against this Special Ops and Marine coming and destroying his RP. His RP has taken a huge amount of damage. Infantry are very powerful units, just not very tough. That's why they aren't used a whole lot in large groups. That, in fact, that they aren't... Well, they aren't... 
like I said, they aren't tough, so they die very quickly, so you have to use them in large groups. But when they are used in large groups, they can get in range to actually deal damage. They deal quite a bit of damage for their cost. Anyway, an ATT coming in for George Lee. Both ATTs coming in to get rid of this attack. And they are going to be able to effectively get rid of the attack, defending the RP and preventing it from being destroyed as it was previously. Now, jumping towards the 642 mark. Oh, wow. Holy crap. Chris is going for a total proxy base, so he is still committed to this aggression. He's definitely going for Mar tanks. He's not gone for any expansions, though. He's sending a Marine out. This is his first expansion towards the central southwest expansion, and it looks like George Lee's far southwest expansion has not actually been taken. He didn't end up going for it. His Marines were kept back to defend. So Chris Worth focused heavily on this proxy, but I, I don't think that's actually going to happen. This proxy is happening based on a Marine that appears to be dead. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, maybe it's not actually dead, but I'm fairly certain that Marine is dead. I'm fairly certain the Marine never actually stayed alive long enough for anything to happen. So, Chris is building with nothing. He's building on air right now, he has nothing to actually make it causally consistent. That being said, there are still defenses at his main base for the ATTs coming in, but the ATTs are not going to take a lot of damage from the Martank. Plot units don't take a whole lot of damage from artillery, and the Marine is now being sent to the far southwest expansion for George Lee. And Chris Worth at the 738 mark has his expansion being set up by this Marine. The HCs are coming into the main base, are attacking the Martanks. The Martanks have no detector units to help them out. So the ATCs will be able to deal well deal with both Martanks quite handily. And like I said, even if they had detection, the Martanks don't deal a whole lot of damage. They'd need another backup force. But Chris Worth is we got a factory here. Okay, he does have a factory here. He's not using it, though. And like I said, this base, this proxy base is out here, not ultimately happening. The Marine that was used to build it did not actually end up being built. Chris Worth getting machinery at the 647 mark. Likely to use that to get Tornads, because those detect ATHC, or those detect cloak units. And they're also bomber units, which is quite handy. And defense turret being built as well for the ATHCs to... Oh, okay, I thought a defense turret was being... Oh, sorry, the... Chris jumped forward a bit. So yeah, he is going to be building a defense turret to deal with the ATHCs at about the 7 minute mark. But we don't see that yet because it hadn't propagated. There we go. So the 65 mark, we do see that the defense turret is being built up, or would be built up once the next time it comes along. Sorry, the Chris did not want to have this propagated. He is, however, setting up another turret. So he's going to have, ultimately, two turrets at his front base to help get rid of these ATHCs. And like I said, the Martanks don't deal a huge amount of damage, but the defense turret is going to be able to deal a fair amount of damage if it stays alive long enough to get up. And it will be able to actually get up it will kill one of the ATHCs, and the other ATHC is just... Uh, it will kill it. Just barely. 41 health left, but it is able to kill off the ATHC, and three more tanks are now up for Chris Worth at the 820 mark. Back in the present, we see that George Lee getting a heavy cruiser, and he doesn't have aerospace. He's not going for nukes. He's just going for heavy cruisers, which is not a terrible idea, actually. Given there's no hier hierarchies, using chunky units is a good idea. Chunky units being units that have a high power for just being one unit. A single powerful unit, because that means that you only have to use one order in order to order it around and have as much power as potentially several other small units. A bunch of infantry have about the same amount of power as a heavy cruiser, but would require as many orders as each infantry unit, while the heavy cruisers only require one order per cruiser for all the attack power they have. That being said, I'm a bit surprised I'm not seeing carriers yet. Both players have a lot of resources, and Chris Ruth actually going down to the 7-minute mark, going to the deep past, it looks like he is... Sorry, not, not Chris Ruth, George Lee. Going to the deep past, sending his ATHCs around and flanking, going up the back path into Chris Ruth's base, rather than going through the front path, and Chris Ruth back to the present, sending out his Mar tanks towards George Lee's base... Or, sorry, the expansion he expects George Lee to be at, Probably before sending into George Lee's base. George Lee is actually at the eastern expansion, the smaller expansion, and also the southwest expansion, but he hasn't developed there yet. Now, back at the eight-minute mark, where George Lee is focused, there is two ATCs are coming in, and they are going to be hitting at the 815 mark. They're attacking the factory from behind. Chris Worth doesn't have any defenses really here to deal with it. He has all of his defense tours at the front of his base, and nothing in the back. And he has jumped back here to try to deal with this. Jumping back to the 806 mark, and actually jumming back right next to the playable past, he has two orders he can send to be able to actually deal with this and he has to make those two orders count although granted he does have recharging current energy but still he has to make those orders count that's going to be crucial sending mechs to build a defense but i don't think it's going to last honestly i think the mechs are going to be killed by that atc and the atc are going to get into the base and start dealing damage before anything meaningful happens 
jumping forward and it looks like no the mech have was not undone the orders are not undone so the ATHCs will be able to just get rid of this Martank mech is building a defense turret and at the same time we see this is when the expansion was being built for Chris Worth so the mech has this defense turret up but the defense turret being destroyed by the ATHCs as I expected and both ATHCs are able to just wreak havoc in Chris's base and just double check what Chris is up to in the pre or yeah Chris is up to in the present he had his Martanks going over here and he hasn't sent them further towards George Lee's base he hasn't set up any orders to actually attack anything beyond that but near the unplayable past, we do see that he is trying to send something to deal with this. I'm a bit surprised. Here, there's a tornado. But I'm a bit surprised we don't see a tornado yet, but that's just because it's not built yet. It is now built, and the Martanks and Tornados will be able to deal with this, so the Martanks will not survive the encounter. The tornado, however, will be able to handily get rid of the ATHCs, thus destroying this attack, but still a very clever attack by. Wow, that actually killed half the ATHC army that Chris Worth had sent. Very clever attack by George Lee, killed off half the. Sorry, half the Mar army that. Chris Worth sent. Chris Worth does have three importers at his expansion though in a factory, so he's still a bit in better position than George Lee is. But George Lee did at least buy himself some time with respect to the Mar tanks. His cruisers are ready though, and he is building now frigates as well and Tornado, so he's definitely focused on getting an air force. Has gate tech as well at this point, and using his mech to build presumably a chronoporter, though it could be a teleporter, very likely to be a chronoporter. While Chris Worth is focused sorry, George Lee's focused on getting this expansion. Chris Worth is actually sending his marine also to that expansion probably trying to get it for himself so both players are going to be contending for that expansion while martanks are being rebuilt inside chris worth's base chris has oh wow that factory was heavily damaged in that atc attack but it's not dead he is setting up some turrets to help defend that entrance which may not be the best idea given that there are going to be air units coming in from the future pretty soon george lee has his chronoporter set up probably in about 40 seconds or so we will see the Corona Porter actually being completed and George Lee being able to do something with it but we will have to wait for that to be propagated for that to actually happen. I do expect him fully to start Corona Porting back all these cruisers and actually use that to supplement his attack and basically deal with Chris's base in better than he had before. Chris building up a Teleporter, not building up a Corona Porter. This is interesting. I don't see any Corona Porters on the map for him. No, he's not building up any Corona Porters. He just has his Teleporter up and that will be useful for movement, of course, but the thing is, right now, I think chronoporting is going to be more important. Chris did not have huge space defense at that, at the past point in the past that George Lee is likely to chronoport to, and here are the chronoporter is just recharging. It will all, it will be done in about 10 seconds. And here we go, the Marine coming in, also for George Lee. This is not the best thing for him. The Marine from Chris Worth coming in to attack the expansion is dealing quite a bit of damage. There is... A special ops and two marines coming in to help defend that expansion at the 12 minute mark. Jumping up to the 13 minute mark. Wow, factory has been built at the expansion at the 13 minute mark by Chris Worth. So he's definitely going for that expansion, trying to take it as hard as he can. And in the present, we see Chronoport is ready, or Chronoporting is ready for George Lee, but he hasn't used it yet. He had to be close eye on his timeline. Oh wow, MFB being built for Chris Worth. That's rather unusual. Most players don't actually build those, but that's nice to see. And it looks like. George Lee is probably just scouting out where he needs to go in the past and will have to deal with this attack coming in from Chris Worth, but no, he is in fact going straight for the Chronoport, not even bothering to deal with this attack. And we will be seeing these units get Chronoported back as soon as George Lee gives the order. He is paused, he is ready for it, and once we see him moving in, we'll just have to watch out for that because he is sending this Chronoport order while Chris Worth attacks trying to just get rid of George Lee entirely and Chris Worth ha does definitely has map control that is one important thing to keep in mind he has map control he has an easy he'll have an easy time getting rid of all this stuff but George Lee is now able to he has chronoported back a bunch of units I'm not sure where he chronoported them back to but he has chronoported back a bunch of units and that will be interesting to see as that unfolds because there is a chronoport coming in and we will have to watch out for that on the green timeline sorry yeah green time wave or there should be a chronoport. I'm not sure why I don't see it right now. Perhaps George Lee did try to avoid propagating it. Anyway, regardless, there is still a strong force in Chris Worth coming in at the present. And, ah, here's the here's the chronoport I was looking for. So where did they chronoport to? Chronoport to the 12-minute mark in the unplayable pass. This is a straight attack towards Chris Worth's base, and they're going to be dealing a lot of damage when they actually hit. Chris Worth presumably sees this further up in the timeline. But we're just going to watch it. And at the same... This time, we do see that there's an expansion at... 
middle central western expansion sorry southwestern central expansion that chris worth had taken a while ago while george lee setting up his air force they're just about to hit frigates are hitting first trying to get rid of the martanks one of the martanks trying to deal with damage to can but martanks don't do a huge amount of damage to air tornado's coming in as well now able to take care of the rest of it the Martanks will be going down very quickly, so the force that Chris Worth would have sent is being destroyed quite handily. Chris Worth back to the 1622 mark. He does not have a Chrono Port of his own. This was the Chrono Port that we just... No, this is a different Chrono Port, actually. Hold on a sec. There was another Chrono Port. So, Chris Worth, however, at the 16 minute mark, does have this factory in here. He is destroying George Lee's expansion. And yes, a Chrono Port has... Oh, wow. Chris Worth actually has sent a Chrono Port. Sending back the units he had attacked with originally and sending them back looks like he is sending them back roughly ah, here we are roughly to the point where the attack started yes at the 14 minute mark trying to get rid of these units before their chrono board actually hits and of course this is what we ultimately see the chrono board the teleporter is being destroyed but the units have already arrived or I should say they're yeah, they will have already arrived. The Mar tanks in question are not going to be there. So these Mar tanks we see chrono board back are ultimately not going to exist. However, George Lee is still taking a ton of damage from these Mar tanks. On the blue time wave, they will cease to exist, but for now, they are definitely being a thorn inside. And the teleporter has barely survived. Not being destroyed by George Lee. George Lee did not manage to kill it. Chris Worth has, however, not really managed to destroy this expansion yet. Though that was further in the future, we saw the expansion be more thoroughly destroyed. And now that the Chrono Porter is not really that useful, it's actually going to be... Oh wow, it looks like... Not only that, the Chrono Port was ultimately destroyed, so that Chrono Port attack that Chris Worth sent did not actually happen. Though, it's hard to tell if George Lee's Chrono Port attack ever happened either. I think he may have aborted it entirely just to go for the straight attack just near the unplayable past, and then double check, but I think that... Yeah, it looks like the Chrono Port was cancelled. So, George Lee, instead going for a straight defense, getting rid of what Chris Worth had and stopping his Chrono Port from happening, but it's the cost of his own Chrono Port. However, George Lee's Chrono Port still exists, and he can still send back the units if he wants to. He just hasn't yet. And at the 16 minute mark, we see that Chris Worth running out of orders as well. He's actually a bit further in the future, but he is running out of orders, trying to, to just set himself up. And it looks like he has, well, not much to speak of in terms of military, but does have a lot of production still. He didn't lose any of his infrastructure. Going for Lancers heavily now instead of going for anything else. No aerospace, mind you. Lancers have an upgraded weapon when aerospace is upgraded, and that has not been upgraded. Just want to point that out. And just double-checking George Lee at the 17-minute mark. We don't see him going for any Chrono Ports yet. He does have his Southwest expansion, what's left of it, back alive. Chris Worth did lose that attack he set up there, but he still has map control. That's one thing to bear in mind. Chris Worth has map control. He has better infrastructure for production. He doesn't have as good of an Air Force, and he doesn't have, more importantly, as good of an anti-Air Force. And he also doesn't have Chrono Porting, which is something that George Lee has not actually been using very much now. he's He has the units to Chrono Port with, but he hasn't actually used them to Chrono Port. Which is annoying to watch, because he has this Chrono Port right here. This beautiful, pristine, well-maintained field Chrono Porter, and he's not using it. I mean, that costs real money. Or at least, real crystals. Because, and plasma. I mean, come on. Gotta respect the crystals and plasma that went into that job. Seriously, if the mark workmanship all over it, you gotta make use of that. But anyway, George Lee it looks like he's actually, well, he's not making use of it. I can tell you that much. And Chris Worth is building up his army, getting himself set up, ready to teleport. Though it looks like he's getting himself prepared to go for a large teleport as soon as the Chrono Energy comes back for him. He has 12 orders worth, and yes, he is going for a Chrono Port right towards the southwest base which will be very handy for getting rid of what George Lee had set up. But George Lee, on the other hand, not really setting up much of an army. I'm not sure why he's not setting up much of an army. He does have... Well, what? Honestly, why is he not setting up an army? I mean, granted, I'm not at the time where he's focused, but still, he is... He's doing something. He's moving around some infantry, but he's not actually building anything. I'm not sure why. I'm not sure what his motivation is. He has plenty of money in the bank. He's... Got plenty of stuff going on, but he's not actually building anything. And bear in mind, this is actually a live game both players are playing right now. This is not a replay, so any issues that have been mentioned about replays going on is not the case. This is happening as I speak. Both players are playing as I speak, and I'm just observing. So, 
This is really George Lee just not doing anything right now for some reason. I don't know why. Looks like he's... I don't know, he's just holding up, he's setting up, he had infantry moving towards the southwest expansion before. Jumping back to the 1932 mark, we see this is the infantry I was talking about, moving towards the southwest expansion to deal with the Martanks, although infantry versus Martanks is suicide for the infantry, so I don't know why he's going for that. And like I said, this corner border here not being used where it should be. However, George Lee, jumping back to the unplayable past, it looks like he might have been trying to use the corner border. I don't know, he's not actually doing anything with it. Jumping back to the present at the 2139 mark, not doing anything either. And he's moving back to the 246 mark. He is moving up his... Okay, now he's moving his units into position to use the Corona Border. An MFB coming in to use it. The cruisers, however, not been moved to use it. The Tornod and Friggin' not being moved to use it. And in case you're wondering about Corona Energy, he has 30 orders worth. He's fine. I don't know. There's nothing wrong with that. So Martanks coming in and trying to do what damage they can, but they can't really do much damage. There's just turrets everywhere. One of the Martanks is flanking quite intelligently, but it is still in range of the turret. It doesn't have a spotter, so it can't actually get rid of the turret without being damaged itself, and the turret will be able to survive the onslaught. The Martank will be going down before the turret does, but this turret has taken a lot of damage in the process, and it looks like... Oh no! And the Martank barely survives. Five health left. I did not expect that. Five health left. That Martank is barely clinging to life, but it is alive. It is able to deal all the damage it can, because as we all know, in real-time strategy games... If a unit is not dead, it's as fully alive. Doesn't matter if it has one leg and a bum arm, or in this case a bum tread, and the cannon's bent, it deals just as much damage as it would have if it was right, fresh out of the factory. So that Martank is going strong. George Lee's going to have to deal with that, and he has lost a turret. He has an opening in his defense, which the Martank is taking full advantage of, and now he's at the MFB being chronoported back and teleported in. Here we are. So, Either George Lee just made a mistake or is doing something very clever by s teleporting his MFB and mech onto the roof here. Now, in case you're wondering, yes, it is possible to teleport onto the roofs of these large, supposed to be large buildings. And no, that was probably a mistake. He's building a teleport on top of the roof. But yeah, that's something I've got to deal with. Regardless, he did teleport on the roof, so he does have a teleporter on the roof. That's important to note. He does a teleporter right in the middle of Chris Worth's base that's on the roof, and he can build a defense turret on the roof. So honestly, I'm still not sure if this is a mistake or not because. This is actually going to be very useful for him. So, three defense stores being built up right next to Chris Worth's base. Chris Worth at the 2109 mark is sending his Martanks into some double checks main base. He doesn't have any Corona Porters up in his main base. Further to the present at the 23 minute mark, his Martanks are hitting and dealing quite a bit of damage in George Lee's base. He does not have Corona Porters set up. He's definitely got the map control advantage, though. He's Taking that, taking full advantage of it. And he does have a Corona Porter, never mind. He has a Corona Porter at the 24 minute mark, fully ready to send some units back in time, but not using it for that purpose yet. And we see the defense turrets coming in, able to destroy the importers and the factory, but Chris Worth has so many importers right now. He has uh, one in his main base, he's got to have at least two others. Or at least one other. I... Where's that importer? Seriously. No, he's got to have at least two others, because that importer only has. Oh no, never mind. I'm sorry, George Lee's red. So, Chris Worth actually has one importer, and that's the only one. So he has eight reserves, mind you, but he did lose the three importers that were his main focus of importers. His, he has a ton of mechs in the main base, and... Whoa, wait, current import departure. Hold on a second. That's got to be here, because that's the most likely place for current import to happen. Just double check that it wasn't George Lee. And no, George Lee does not need his nearest current importer. He does have a... Here we are, there's a mech and, mech fab and, every, or mech and MFB that George Lee had teleported in, but they aren't actually... Oh, that's bizarre. Why are they not doing anything? Well, it doesn't matter because the main base is being heavily attacked, and it looks like... Yeah, they're chronoported back and then teleported back. So I'm not sure where that teleporter is that they had built before. I don't know where it is. It should be there. But yet it isn't. Like I said, this teleporter and defense turret, which are gone as of this red time wave. So I honestly don't know what happened there. George Lee must have accidentally undone the mech's orders when he sent back... Anyway, it looks like we do have a Corona Port. Like I said, there's a Corona Port coming in from Chris Worth, and I'm quite certain it's Chris Worth because it was a Corona Port detected. But I don't know where it is. I kind of annoyed by that. He is, however, trying to get a ton of Liquid Crystal. Probably freezes his final attack. He is. This is probably his final attack, mind you, on George Lee's base. He's setting up 
all of his Mara tanks coming in, destroying everything that's in there. Tan coming in from George Lee to help defend, but George Lee does not have a lot of bases right now. He has the mech and the, and the MFB in the middle of the map here that aren't doing anything. And it's Frigate and Tornado coming in to help defend, but these... The Lance are not doing too much to help in the attack. It is damaging some of the RPs, but the rest of his army has... If it is coming in, it hasn't come in yet, but I don't think it is going to come in. Jumping back to the 2144 mark, which is where the Chronoport likely would have arrived at. No, not arrived there, so... George Lee... I'm just surprised he didn't use his Chronoporter more. I mean, seriously, he had the QP for it. That just... That just boggles me. He had the QP, he had the C. Okay, now the mech is doing something, building a macrofab on there, getting defense turrets up. But honestly, this is kind of late. Chris Worth already has the units he needs. Losing a bunch of reserves isn't going to stop him. And it's 15 reserves, by the way, that he'd be losing. But losing those reserves isn't going to really stop him at this point. He's got everything he needs. A bunch of mechs coming in as well to help take care of the heavy cruisers. Good idea. Like I said, they are powerful anti-air units. And this is going to be a bit cruel, though, for Chris, because Chris is not going to really realize that the mech's on the roof. And that is not going to be an easy thing to... F really an easy thing to fight with it. With the turrets here and everything, the base set up. I mean, he's going to wonder where George Lee is, but... I don't know if he's going to be able to figure out where he is in time. He probably will, though, given that his importers were attacked, and he's likely well aware that the importers would have to be attacked by something on the roof. But at the 26 minute mark, he hasn't actually sent anything to deal with it yet. He hasn't got any units built up. He's not... He doesn't have anything going for actually dealing with this attack. And there's a lot of turrets being built on this roof. It's becoming very difficult to actually assault at this point. It looks like Chris, it, he does have pause going. And I'm guessing a chronoport is likely to happen. But he doesn't have a lot of units in position to chronoport. He doesn't have a lot of units, period. This is actually kind of annoying. I don't... don't he has a ton of special ops coming in. And he has a... No, Lancer, but he's hardly got anything in. Okay, current port departure has been detected. I'm not sure where it was, though. It looks like it couldn't have been here because there's no units to chronoport. The only units that would have chronoported did not end up departing from here. So, yeah, Chris Worth, not sure what he is up to because George Lee does not have a chronoporter, and the only chronoporter. So, the only. Oh, here we are. That's why. Silly me. The. See, the chronoport that occurred would have been. Oh, come on. Tell me back to when the chronoport would have occurred. Okay, here we are. So, this is what I'm looking for. We have Martanks and mechs used to assault the base, chronoporting back, and helping themselves out. So, destroy the base faster. Though, this is still after the mech arrived, and not really doing too much to help out, honestly. The cruiser is going to be able to take care of this Martank here. The mechs aren't doing too much either, since they're getting attacked by, the, by that tank, but. It's a slight advantage, I suppose. It's not a huge difference, though, in terms of what has changed. The mech is going to be, help, be able to help get rid of that heavy cruiser a bit faster, but it looks like the Martanks were destroyed this time around, so that that corner is not going to be particularly powerful. Heavy cruiser coming in has found the turrets on the roof, but that's not going to be able to do too much. Really, what he needs to do is get a large army, probably Tornads, Either Tornods or Heavy Tanks or Twin Mars. Actually, Twin Mars aren't a bad idea. Get a bunch of Twin Mars, Chronoport, Teleport, and just try to tear this apart as early as possible. Like, teleport right onto the roof, get rid of everything. That would be the best way of taking care of this. He does have a lot of special ups, though, and I'm not... I... I mean, they do a fair amount of damage, but I don't think that would actually do the trick. And George Lee is trying to take out the RPs, the expansion in the Central Southwest... Not really doing too much for that, and Chris Worth has a central south northeast expansion. The central southwest expansion has been completely used up, so there's no real point destroying the RPs there. And Chris Worth has a set of teleporter special ops in here. Instead of going, yeah, he has the teleporter right here, and they are going to be teleported in. So he is teleporting in the special ops to try to deal with this. I don't imagine this is going to be particularly useful because the special ops, like I said, they're decently powerful and they can heal each other, but they're still fairly weak. He is using the focus bar on the turrets, though. There's a lot of turrets. That's the only problem. There's many. There's eight turrets. Three of them... Well, at pretty much any point on this side, three of them are going to be in range. However, the turrets on the right side of the of this base have been destroyed. So there is a beachhead. There's an opening that Chris were to take advantage of, which he is definitely taking advantage of, getting rid of the army. It does get a marine built, but the army has been destroyed. The marine will be killed very quickly by these special ops. They just have a much higher fire rate than the Marines, so they're able to deal much more damage in a short amount of time that they both have to live. 
But the turrets, like I said, three turrets in range at any time, going to be able to destroy all these special ops before they're able to kill the importer. Granted, the importer has no reserves in it right now, so George Lee is playing without any reserves. He would have to rely entirely on mechs. Getting a heavy cruiser, though, with the last reserve that he did have, that will be effective in getting rid of what forces Chris is sending. But like I said, Chris has tons of money in the bank. He has enough production capacity, well, at least get a couple more macrofabs, but build up a ton of Twin Mars and teleport those in. That would be the best thing to do right now. And that would really be the best thing to do. He has a Mar... He does have a Mar tank lower down that's destroying the turrets from the ground, which is a good idea. That is a good way of taking care of this, but it's not the best way. Jumping back to the 29... Yeah, 29 minute mark. We see this is before the attack happened, and... Looks like Chris might have decided to go back on the attack. Yeah, he's apparently decided not to go through with the attack. I'm not sure why exactly, but as you can see, the units are not actually moving in to take on this attack, which is kind of bizarre. I'm not sure why he went back on that. He does have his Martank going towards the area to help attack. Let's double check that this isn't the attack that we saw. No, the turrets are still alive. The Magnafab's still alive, everything's still alive, so no, the infantry have not been sent until now, and the infantry in question are not being sent to that base either, they're actually being sent... Let's double check where they're being sent to, that... This is rather bizarre, I don't know why the infantry orders were not carried through. Anyway, now they are being sent to attack the southwest expansion, which isn't particularly large or important. So, he's not attacking the expansion, which is not a bad idea, this base on the roof has two heavy cruisers defending it, and he just, Chris does not have enough anti-air to actually deal with it. This is... At this point, I would not recommend Twin Mars. Twin Mars were just before the heavy cruisers came in, and it was just the turrets, just these buildings, because Twin Mars have the highest anti-ground damage in the game. So they have no problem dealing with this. And it looks like George Lee is trying to build a factory on top of a turret, which is, of course, impossible, since, of course, two objects cannot occupy the same space at the same time. And despite the existence of time travel in this game, that rule is not changed. If they try to, they take damage. It's called Chrono Fragging. However, looks like the Marine is setting up a factory in a more physically capable spot. And it will be successful being set up. Martanks have been teleported in, and they are dealing damage to the turrets, trying to take care of what they can. One of the Martanks has died. The other Martanks still in range of the turrets, so it will be able to destroy the turrets. You saw before, Martanks can defeat turrets one-on-one. -on -one. But it will be a hard won battle, and it won't be able to actually damage any more turrets effectively. 47 health left. We'll be able to get rid of this teleporter, which could be useful. George Lee is about 10 seconds down from here, and has actually fended off the Martanks. So these Martanks ultimately never actually dealt the damage they were intended to deal, because George Lee stuck his units in place to defend against this, so it looks like Chris Worth isn't even bothering with this attack, actually. That's strange. I don't know why. So it looks like the attack was not bothered with. And yeah, the Martanks are not going to be dealing any damage. Those Martanks never actually came in here. Not able to deal the damage they needed to deal. And Chris building up... He needs to build more macrofabs. This is, this is actually bothering me. He, he has so much money. Not a lot of QP, but he has a lot of money and very little production capacity. This is bothering me because he's not spending the money he has. And there's no economic undermining going on here. George Lee does not have the capacity for economic undermining at this point. He doesn't even have a Chrono Porter. So that's not a concern. George Lee now has a ton of QP and converting all of it to LC, which is going to be very effective at getting rid of, well, excess QP, which he doesn't really need. He doesn't have enough Chrono Porting going on, and he's not building very QP heavy units. At least QP heavy units that aren't also LC heavy. And Chris, I'm just surprised he could be getting more QP RPs. He has quite a few QP RPs, but he's not using as much as he could be getting aerospace, and he has. He has aerospace, he has a heavy cruiser, and that heavy cruiser is loaded with a nuke. So he's going for a last ditch nuke attack, but I don't imagine this is going to actually work out. The frigates are going to be too powerful. Between the frigates and the heavy cruisers, I think this heavy cruiser is going to die before it's able to drop the nuke. And the turrets, not to mention those. And it looks like this mech trying to build a chrono porter once again in a physically impossible area. And the, like I said, the heavy cruiser dead before it can even get in a position to start prepping the nuke to drop. So, that heavy cruiser not actually being able to do his job. Chris has jumped back, but a minute before that attack ended up happening. But he's still going for it. He hasn't actually changed that up yet. He has the his chrono energy to change that order, but he hasn't done so. And George Lee is further focused at 35 minute mark. And his... Oh my. 
like I said, this is still bothering me. Why is he not spending his resources? He has tons of resources. And Chris, oh, Chris is actually doing something. He is going to be setting up nice nothing, actually. He's no attacks, no chronoports, no real changes to his state in the timeline. I, I'm not sure what is going on here. And George Lee trying to get his RPs over to back to his main base, which will be destroyed quite quickly. So that's a bit of a waste, unfortunately. So George Lee losing a lot of chrono energy to do this. Ah, uh, here, here's what Chris is doing. Setting up his units in position to t chrono port, and his mech looks like he's building a teleporter. While this base here that... Oh, wow, that is... There's a chrono porter there coming up for George Lee. That's going to be a problem. And that's going to be a problem for Chris Worth because George Lee has a larger army at this point. Surprisingly enough, despite Chris's map control and everything, he is not producing enough units. He really needs to produce more units. He has the QP to produce more units. He doesn't have any chrono porter going on, so he doesn't need all that QP. And yeah, he's producing some infantry, but he needs, like... At this point, he needs six, five or six factories. I know it seems a bit excessive, but... For the amount of units he could build, at least just to burn up all the resources he has now. Really, for continuous, he would need more like two or three. But for all the resources he has, just to burn them all up, five or six minimum. And he does not have that. And like I said, here's the teleporter coming up for Chris Worth. And now we see more specialists being teleported in from Chris, but not able to destroy this. This will not be easily destroyed with special ops. You're gonna, he's going to need heavy tanks and twin Mars. And the thing is, tanks aren't that QP heavy. Mars are not QP heavy at all. He just needs to have twice as many like, twice as many factories, twice as many macrofabs. He'll be able to build up enough heavy tanks and mar and twin Mars to be able to just take out this pace, take out this base in one fell swoop, but he's not doing that. He really needs to do that. That's his best option at this point. He has the resources, he has the chrono energy, he has the position to do it, and George Lee now sending out he's sending out a corner port. He's going to be chronoporting all these units right now, actually. Jumping back to the 35 minute mark, and... no, oh, well, he's not propagating that, so we will see that once the red time wave comes along, right here, once it comes across the 35 minute mark. Let's put a bookmark on there, so we know when it happens. And... that is something Chris does not want to have happen. He doesn't have the army to deal with this, especially at the 35 minute mark, he's at... He's focused at 38 minute mark, and even then he's not building much. He's building infantry. Building infantry this armory over here in the northeast expansion, and even then he's not building a whole lot. I'm not sure what he's expecting. I really don't know why he's... He's building armories here, building a bun bunch of infantry from these armories. Got slingshots set up, going for the standard haiku slingshot strategy, which is how his special ops got in here in the first place. But this is not... This is not going to be effective. He really needs to have... Higher caliber units. He needs ground units. That's the tech he needs, because that's what you need for Twin Mars and Heavy Tanks. He needs the ground units. He needs to use that. Actually make full use of it. But he's not doing that. Building a ton of importers as well, which will be useful, but... That is useful, mind you. He should have done that 10 minutes ago, but it is useful. And bear in mind, 10 minutes is the immutable pass, so I can't just jump back there and say he should have done it, because he can't. He really should have done it 10 meta minutes ago. There was no reason not to. And he has his army set up. And this is where, I said, the red time came along. All right. This is why I bookmarked it. Because we see that the frigates and heavy cruisers are being set up to attack Chris's base directly at the 35-minute mark. Getting, well, okay, he's getting rid of the RPs, which is completely useless. Though, surprisingly, no one's really gone for the southwest base, and the northeast base has only been slightly tapped. Chris is not going for that at all. The north base is not really tapped. The eastern base has been tapped out. The southern base here... George Lee is going for, which is a good idea. But yeah, I think George Lee will actually come back from this because Chris did not build up enough units. However, that's entirely contingent on being able to get past these defense turrets, which was a good idea to build, ultimately, because it looks like... Wow, okay, so George Lee decided he wanted to take the ramp path with his air units, which wasn't really necessary. And as a result, he actually ended up losing the units he chronoported back, so that uppercut was kind of useless. Jumping back to the 39 minute mark, we don't see much going on here for Chris or for George. Neither player has changed much of anything in their army state. Chris hasn't built, still hasn't built up much of anything, and George Lee hasn't built much of anything. Chris is building inventory and periodically sending them in to attack, but they aren't really doing much. They, they're basically dying before they're able to actually deal any meaningful damage. 
Now, they get two or three shots off and they get killed by the turrets. I really don't know why he's sending his forces into the meat grinder like this. I, I don't know if he's aware of the power of heavy tanks and twin Mars. Because, really, they're powerful. They're very much worth getting. He, he needs those. That's what he needs to win. Those two units. And, of course, I can't tell him this because that would be... No, that would be kind of cheating. But, yeah, he's... He really needs to do that. Okay, it looks like mechs are being sent back in time by George Lee. This is being sent back to the 41 minute mark. I'm sorry, 38 minute mark, but... I don't know, George Lee just not really... Yeah, he's sending them in. He's teleported them into Chris's base to deal with damage he can to the RPs. Really, this macro is probably the best thing to attack, because if Chris ever decides to start building tech units, it might actually become a threat. So these mechs dealing with damage they can, they don't deal a whole lot of damage individually, but together they're actually taking care of that macrofab quite quickly. They're still dealing about 100 damage together, 100 damage every 5 seconds or so. And the special ops coming in from Chris, yeah, he's not able to actually break this containment, which honestly, I don't know why he's not going for... I'm, I'm, I know, I'm harping. I know I'm harping. Because it's very important to keep this in mind. And I'm not surprised that I see this happening because most players automatically assume that Mars and Twin Mars are useless units. Or sorry, not Mars, sorry. Mars, I think, are, are awesome units. I think Twin Mars are useless because they aren't Mars. But the thing is, Twin Mars aren't useless because they are actually... Oh, here goes... Cron... Oh. Cron report going on for Chris. And... Yeah, okay, he didn't actually want that propagated, so we'll see that when it arrives. But anyway... Yeah, Mar tanks, yes, they are powerful. They're powerful artillery units. They're powerful against groups, and the Macrofab is barely alive. Mar tank being built barely saves the Macrofab. 13 health left. But yeah, Mar tanks are very useful against groups. And they're useful at range. And they're useful for getting past things like this. The fact that this is on a ridge. But they aren't useful against single targets very much. Twin Mars are awesome against single large targets, which is exactly what this base is made of. Many single large targets. To the importer, that's actually pretty weak. But the rest of them are, they're still large targets. Splash damage doesn't make as much of a difference, but high damage per shot makes a huge difference. Heavy tanks are also quite useful, and they're used more often because they're powerful anti-air. But I'm just surprised he hasn't, like I said, he doesn't have the ground units tech to actually build these. And... Wow, I mean, mechs are not a good unit for what George Lee is doing either. He's sending out units that... They're anti-air units. And Chris is not sending up any air units, and he really shouldn't. There's no reason to send air units at this point. There aren't air units that could do the job that, like I said, ground units could do a lot better. And even at this point, there are no heavy cruisers. So, honestly, Twin Mars are all he'd need. There are no heavy cruisers from George Lee on the map at apparently any point in time. Let's double-check the present. He probably has built some for... No, he hasn't! No, George Lee has no mechs for in the future, and Chris has tons of QP. He could easily build the units he needs, chronoport them back, and teleport them in, and just finish this. But no, he isn't going for that. And he does have... Okay, he has these factories coming in, which probably will be building tanks, but he needs macrofabs. That's what he needs. He needs macrofabs, he needs to have Mar tanks, he needs to make them twin Mars, and he needs to just tear the space apart. Because there are no air units in here, so the heavy tanks aren't even necessary. I mean, they're still useful against Grand Units, don't get me wrong, but Twin Mars are what you'd want to use. And it looks like George Lee has jumped back, cornerboard back, more mechs. Oh, wait, here we go. Ah, here we go, Martank. Martank Lance is being cornerboarded back for Chris. He is sending them in. So, Martank's being sent in in the unplayable past. Deep uppercut. I still think it should be Twin Mars, but the Martanks will at least be able to do some damage. They aren't the best thing in the world, but they are going to be effective. And this is when the mechs came in, too. This is when the Martank that was built ultimately to save that Macrofab. Actually, I just want to double-check that this is going to end up going through. And yes, the Martank that was being built will end up being built, so we'll be able to destroy the mechs in time. So this should be causally consistent. And the Martanks are actually dealing quite a bit of damage both to the turrets and to the base. They destroyed two, three of the turrets so far, actually. And destroying the rest of the base here. And a chrono port departure. This is the chrono port departure we just we are witnessing right now of the Martanks, I think. Actually, let me just double check that one. No, this is a different chrono port departure. This is a chrono port departure of 
another set of units, but anyway. Oh, come on. Oh, this is a heavy cruiser that was being corner in with the nuke that didn't ultimately do anything. And Mar tanks, however, are doing a bang up job getting rid of this. I still think Twin Mars was a better idea, but Mar tanks work. They aren't working as quickly, but they are working quickly enough because George Lee is not building enough to actually defend against this. So at the 42 minute mark, George Lee's focused. These Mar tanks have dealt quite a lot of damage, but didn't actually get put on an attack move. So George Lee has a very small spot of breathing room. Not enough at this point. Chris will be able to take this. Just bizarre that it took so long. And he's not going for tanks either. He has the reserves, mind you. He's not short of anything you need. The Mar tanks really are what's needed. And the frigate's coming in a spot for the Mar tanks. Doing a pretty good job, but the Mar tanks should just be moving forward right now. Chris is at the 44 minute mark before seeing the attack propagate in. He. Okay, George Lee is being highly tenacious, apparently. He does not want to surrender. He is just. Going for a straight. He just wants to be attacked. And now, but a mech's coming in, getting themselves killed, but ultimately actually killing things, sort of. Now, the defense turrets are destroying them very quickly. Mechs do not have a lot of health, and defense turrets do. And like I said, mechs are not anti ground units. So about 10 mechs died to do the job of two Mars, which are not being sent forward in order to attack. And I don't know why Chris has the orders to do it. Has the chrono energy to do it. George Lee jumping back. He's at the 43 minute mark, right at the unplayable past edge, and cannot do a thing. So George Lee at this point has lost. He's He has lost. There's no way for him to win this game. The only chance he has is Chris basically taking a sweet time. And as we can see at the 47 minute mark, Chris is not taking a sweet time. He is going to be destroying... Well, he is taking a sweet time, but not so much that George Lee is able to recover and win. So, George Lee has lost. There is still one turret... Okay, George Lee is surrendering. Good, he's not going to be a, total, he's not going to be a jerk about it. That's nice. And he has GG'd. So, that was long. Oh boy. That was long. That's an interesting showcase of the, hi anti of the no hierarchy game. But really, actually, not really interesting. It was a <laughs> a good demonstration about why you sh why it's important to know what all the units do, and what unit is best to use in any given situation. Because, like I said, that particular case would have been solved 20 minutes ago with Twin Mars, Twin Mars and heavy tanks. That would have done it. I'm not sure if Chris is a CISO player, though. I, I'm pretty sure he plays CISO quite a bit, and not sure exactly why I didn't go for that. It, like I said. Mars are really popular, people think Twin Mars are useless as a result, but that's really not true. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that, thank you for watching, and have a good night everyone.